Not in a woods per se, but I did spend about two months looking after a small dude ranch operation during the winter months. Be on Atutarank in Rocky Mountains Northwest Montana. Small outfit just getting started, only operate during summer. Owner asks for volunteers to stay during January February, take care of the horses, keep things in order. Dude Ranch has electricity and a phone line, but no internet hookup, online stuff handled by small office in town. Decide fuck it, more pay and I get to hang around, shoot funds, sit on my ass and feed the horses. Little did I know. Exe starts off pretty chill, use company card to hit up the Costco and load up on food, because fuck dealing with that road more than any CCS area, plan out meals and such, have all the food I need for the two months but forgot shaving supplies, always forget something, fuck it. By week one I started talking to the horses. By week two, they started talking back went through three and a half spam cans of 7.62 x 54 r by hand used shovel and dug trench and tunnel network through the ever deepening snow made a whole army of snowmen to fight in my own winter war i am beckameth white the f dot jpg i became a master of moving within my winter wonderland laid in wait beneath the snow for two full hours in attempt to attack, wrestle, and hogtie doe deer for domestication, Bria Fly entertained idea of using said doe as fuck puppet a la. Not saying I did not entertain the thought longer than I should have. Nearly succeeded, doe managed to break loose before I could finish the knot. Do manage to succeed in knifing coyote to death one night, shoot others, and brain tan hides into fur cape for other una snow escapades. The days flow together, time holds no meaning for creatures of the land, I have become one with the frozen woods. Spend more nights out of the bunkhouse cabin than in, some nights in the hayloft, others restlessly patrolling the horse corrals. I see many strange things those nights, some creatures one might call a skinwalker, wendigo, or worse. I no longer fear these beasts for I have become frozen death itself. From the snow-capped peaks of each building to the tunnel system beneath the snow around the property I have absolute dominion. No beast from mountain lions to coyotes to mice escape my notice. I need merely gesture and the horse herd moves as I command. The merest hostile act against the ranch is met by thundering death from my Mosin. I routinely catch small animals by hand and either play with them for a short while before setting them loose or silently dispatching them with my hands before they go into the stewpot. I have plenty of food, but who doesn't like fresh supplies but alas, all good things must come to an end. One morning I hear a faint sound, one I haven't heard in a long time, like the fragment of a lyric to a forgotten song, sound about like that hibernating bear I found. As it gets louder I realize that it's an engine. Fast like brother elk I sprint, up the frozen staircase I built to the roof of the barn I see an SUV making its way up the road, it's the owner. I gaze down upon my crystal world, the shot, bayonet, knifed, clubbed and sodomized remains of the snowman wars, the horse herd looking to me their leader for guidance, all along the tree lean, creatures both large and small cowering beneath my flinty gaze, twin chips of ice peering out from beneath my coyote skin cloak. I am so fucked when he sees all this. Clutching my 9130 and sliding to the ground I meet the owner outside the main guest cabin. I'm close enough I could bayonet him and must resist the urge to do so out of habit with the snowman before I attempt to speak and let him know I'm right behind him. A strangled grunt escapes my lips, startling him as he jumps around to the noise. My voice cracks in an attempt to say hello from long underuse. Thought I was going to get fired, and nearly did but after he asked about everything that went on and seeing that the ranch was in perfect order he decided that as long as I showered I could keep the look and we incorporated a whole mountain man workshop for the guests, teach them a little bushcraft, simple survival stuff and I got a raise out of it. 
MFW even the skinwalkers have learned to fear me. I would guess this was about three to four weeks into it. Barn was gambrel style, the loft has hay and feed storage, snow piled to the sides and with a little work I managed to build a set of stairs to the peak and set up a small snow hut, just big enough for me, my mosin and some small snacks to lay down in. Had small windows all around so I could see the, the tree lean in any direction. Being alone for that long does strange things to you, you gain an intimate knowledge of everything around you. The moment something doesn't jive, you are instantly aware of it. Be chillin' with my newest addition to coyote fur cloak up on the roof, chowing down on some jerky, almost late afternoon, overcast. I can hear the soft movements of the horse herd below me, a faint knacker now and then mixed with their eating and breathing. Hear one of them give a brief snort and the rest go silent, no movement. Glancing to my left I can see one of the roans looking intently to the southwest, into the wind. An instant later it hits me, a smell like rotten meat mixed with a teenager's gym clothes locker that got left over the summer, with some kind of a musk to it as well. Crouching in my snow hut I pull out my monocular and scan the tree lean on the other side of the pasture to the south, that last coyote I bagged was in that direction. I find the spot where I had skinned it out, and I know right where the carcass should be. But all I can make out from my perch is drag marks leading into the woods. I look down to the horses and can see them all still looking in that direction, not moving, no nays or even nervous wickering between them. Pop open the ammo can I keep up there, grab a few fresh stripper clips to tuck into my coat and slide down the slope I set next to the stairs on the north side of the barn. Snow ghost my way along the fence line still keeping my ears open, the smell has faded somewhat, but the musk still lingers like greasy fingerprints on a freshly polished 1911 at a store. Make my way to the southern fence line, all I can make out is the faint indentations of where snow has fallen to cover my tracks from two days ago. Scan the tree lean 20 yards away, can't shake that feeling of unease. Decide fuck it and walk over to where the coyote was, I can see the drag marks clearly, right over the tracks of whatever grabbed it. Tracks are deep, but obscured by the drag, and whatever took it left by the same path I arrived, cutting east deeper into the woods, you go far enough and you hit the Bob Marshall wilderness. That deep musky scent is still strong, sticks in your nose the the olfactory equivalent of peanut butter stuck to the roof of your mouth, but not nearly as tasty. Can see from the way the tracks are spaced whatever it was had a long, bipedal stride, sinking almost twice as deep as my own boot prints into the snow. I fully intended to leave the carcass for scavengers and the like, but it seems we have a new player in the game. Made my way back to the barn, horses are still fixated on the southern pasture line, figure it'll stock a few provisions in the hayloft. This marks the start of many a night spent buried in the warm hay. Pretty used to the night noises around the place, coyotes yowling, maybe a cat screech and owls calling out. That's the thing though, I'm used to the noises. Not a lack of them. Dead fucking silence, even the horses kept close to the barn and quiet as snowfall. Didn't get much sleep that night, that musky smell had finally worn off by about dark. Next few days were uneventful, not a whole hell of a lot happening, second wave of snow fascists attempted to take the stronghold that is my snow fortress and were repelled by a wave of glorious 7.62 x 54 r but on the fifth day a southeasterly breeze brought that musk smell slamming back into my nostrils crouched low and took a snow trench to the barn stairs and made my way up to my fort peering over the edge i could see something moving by the tree lean through the monocular it appeared to be crouching low, from the red beneath it I could see it had taken something down. Had dark brown fur covering it, at least that's what it looked like, it stayed low while it moved. The head appeared elongated, ending in a blunt muzzle, almost like a bear, 
but almost like if you took a Rottweiler's head, took off the ears, scaled it up and covered it in coarse brown hair. Finally had a good look at what it had nabbed, a deer from the look of it. Son of a bitch, that one was mine.exe. Put down the monocular, bring the Mosin around and decide to fire a warning shot. With the thundering report of my Mosin ringing through the pines I keep low and watch whatever this is. It's up and looking around, still with a slight hunch but this thing is big, like 8 to 9 feet tall big at a guess. After a moment it grabs its prize around the neck with a single long arm and takes off into the woods again, I give it a while before investigating. Same MO as before, it left along the same train I came, drug the body along behind to cover its tracks, ID follow but it's getting dust again, fuck trying to find this thing in the dark. At the same time, I'm pissed, this thing has the gall to molest my territory, a strange thought comes into my mind. This is my territory, it'll mark it how I like, right along where its tracks go from the tree lean to the clearing before the fence, I piss all along it, took a steaming dump right in one of its footprints. Over the next couple of days, I wait and observe, the whole time I can't shake the feeling that I'm being watched as well. I'm also starting to figure out why the boss managed to buy this ranch for so cheap. Dusk of day 3 I have my answer. In the bunkhouse making some cornbread to go with my chili when I hear the horses start raising 9 kinds of hell, 2 types of chaos and a side of mayhem. Throw on my coat, grab my mosin and affix the bayonet as I charge out the door towards the corrals. I'm almost knocked off my feet by the smell first off, smells like a wookie in heat, but I can't see anything looming out of the growing darkness and falling snow. I make it the main corral attached to the bar and I can see all the horses are panicking, shying away from one side of the corral, the one closest to the south pasture. Nothing in the pasture, but there is something on the fence, as I get closer I can see it's a deer. Part of one. Can't be sure but I would bet money it's the head of the same one I saw it take a few days ago, torn off the neck, just below the head. Prints are fairly clear in the snow, it didn't have anything to drag behind it. Looking to the tree lean I can see a form fading into the pines. Bury the head and get the horses calmed down, head back to the cabin. Took me so long dealing with the horses my cornbread is now an inedible blackened lump. This spooked my horses, made me burn my comb reed and killed a deer in my territory. It's on motherfucker. The next day I keep an eye out, head towards the northern pastures and manage to back another coyote, but I bring the whole carcass back with me this time. Skin it out carefully, made sure to leave the guts intact, save the hide for later use and bury the carcass underneath some old straw to let it ripen. Two days later I head out before first light, grab the now bloated and ripe coyote and take it out the southern fence line. Gather a few pine bows and use an e-tool, did a bed to lie down in, cover my tracks with the pine boughs and line the bed with them. Open up the coyote and leave it about 10 feet in front of me, cover up my last tracks, fix bayonet, chamber around and cover myself with snow. Now the waiting game begins. Manage to get used to the rotten coyote smell after a while, toes are cold but not the numbness that heralds the numbness of frostbite, thank god for red wings. At first I thought that my nose was playing tricks on me, but I realized that musk had returned. It's game time. Its footsteps were barely making a sound in the snow, with that musky odor getting stronger with each footfall. I had a hard time controlling my breath, kept wanting to hold it in but managed to keep it even and low, even with my heart rate going through the roof. I could see it moving through the trees now, but my first thoughts on a bear-like or dog head and muzzle were wrong, and I realized where I had smelled something like this musk before. Long legs and torso leading to powerful shoulders what I guess at a hunch was the neck of an oversized goat head easily almost 3 meters tall. 
black beady eyes with a malevolence in them and stumpy hums pushing through the hair above its brow. I could see the greasy hair of its chin dripping with saliva leaking from the corners of its mouth as it sniffed the air. Sounding for all the world like an enormous set of bellows it snorted out a fetid plume as it raised its head and looked past my position to the barn and ranch. Seemingly satisfied, it stepped out of the trees, crouched and moved towards the coyote, I waited as it got closer. 30 yards. 2015. Sucking in as much air as I could I leaped from my concealed position, bringing my Mosin up over my head and shouted for all I was worth. That sound that came out of me I don't think I could ever replicate, if I did it would have to be in a life or death situation. Everything was contained in that scream, every shouted order to fix bayonets and charge, every screaming balls on fire rush across no man's land, every howl of fury as blades met, and every roar of primitive fury that another dare take what is mine. Stopping dead in its tracks I reared up to its full terrible height, almost twice mine in boots and coyote coat. Summoning up another shout I shouldered the rifle and took a pace forward, how, I don't know, I was ready to piss myself with my own stupidity. This was something else, this was a force of nature, and I was going to stand against it damn right I was. Ducking its head it glared at me with those obsidian orbs of primordial hunger, this creature was contesting its claim. Taking a step forward it answered with a bellowed challenge of its own, the bass rumble of its howl threatening to shake loose the tenuous hold I had upon my bowls. Its own howl still echoing in my ears I couldn't move forward. Everything in me was screaming to cut and run, but as I stood there gazing down the abused wooden length of my Mosin, the dings and pits in the stock stood out in the light. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I took strength in that, this weapon had faced monsters before, faced an unstoppable machine and brought it to its knees. With a snort of its fetid breath it moved to take another step forward. Answering with another cro howl I stood forward, standing over the offending pile of guts that had become the line in the snow. A scarce few yards from me stood a creature out of forgotten legends, a nightmare made manifest glaring at me with hatred. Hatred and something else. A low rumbling growl built that I could feel in my chest as its lips skinned back over foul teeth in twisted parody of a grin, bearing teeth that had no business in even an oversized goat's mouth. A third primitive scream escaped my lips as I sighted just over its shoulder and fired my Mosin. Thunder and fire erupted from the old weapon, playing a modern counterpoint to my own ancient cry. Startled the beast backed off a step. Taking my cue I stepped forward, past the coyote, and raised the rifle above my head, stretching upwards on the balls of my feet for as much extra height I could muster, screaming at the top of my lungs. For whatever reason, that was enough, backing up, and finally turning around, it stalked off into the woods. Somehow, deep down in that primitive part of my brain I knew I had won but the rational part of my brain still wanted to piss myself. I compromised by keeping a steady eye on the woods and pissed on its tracks I hauled the carcass back to the barn and burned it in a barrel, went and sat up on the barn with a bottle of whiskey for the rest of the day. Never came across another kill anywhere on the property after that, found tracks, but never anywhere near the perimeter clearing between the fence and the tree line. I even sighted it from a distance a few times after that, but always from a long way off, but we gave each other a fairly wide berth. I made the barest mention to the boss after he had been back for a while, but he just chalked it up to all the other crazy shenanigans I'd been up to while I held down the fort for two months, but wasn't really interested. I tried talking to a few tribal elders, but none of them wanted anything to do with me. That's pretty much it for spooky stories from that time.